Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar featuring Chilean Focus Explorer Freehill Mining, ASX code FHS. My name's Alex Paul from Investor Stream, and I'll be your host this morning. For those unaware, Freehill has entered into a heads of agreement with Minera El Dorado SEM for the proposed acquisition of the iron copper gold El Dorado project that adjoins the northern boundary of the company's existing Yerbas Buenas magnetite project in Chile. Our speaker today is Freehill Mining CEO Peter Hinner, who will present a short flyover video of the company's acreage and also a slide deck. Please feel free to send in your questions via the chat platform or in the question pane in the GoToWebinar control panel. You can also simply email them into me, and the address is alex at investorstream.com.au. We'll address the questions at the end of the presentation, and as always, we'll attempt to get through as many questions as time permits. You can also, a copy of the webinar will be available on Freehill's website later today, and you can also download a copy of the presentation by navigating to the handouts pane in the control panel. For now, I would like to throw it over to Peter to commence proceedings. Peter, the floor is yours. Thanks for that, Alex, and uh, welcome to all those people that uh, chose to regis register for the uh, webinar. Um, just going to take you through uh, some uh, updates and highlights of uh, Freehills Chilean project, if I if I may. Um, this opening shot probably uh, is is one of the better ones that shows the entire project. Um, but I'll uh, I'll just fast forward to uh, a video, which uh, will probably give you the best idea of what's going on. I'll will just talk talk uh, talk you through it. If we just look at the uh, video here, we've got these uh, three intrusives which really characterise the whole area. Um, in the foreground right here, there's a uh, lone four-wheel drive sitting there. Um, this drone footage was taken just before we started clearing lines for the most recent drilling program that we started in October last year. The uh, trial mining pit was located in this uh, middle ground here and Freehill um, has the tenements that run about two-thirds of the way up this mountain range. And sitting in this small saddle here is where the Pan American Highway goes up into a valley called Alto Churros Valley, which divides essentially what, what is the uh, El Tofo Fault or mountain range from the um, Romaral mountain range. I'll just probably just fast forward slightly just before I go. This, this is the area that uh, was drilled and under which sits what we call the YB6 structure. I'll just uh, fast forward that. Gives you a slightly different perspective. There's that four-wheel drive. Um, these things that run down here are these quite deep incised uh, ravines, which um, to call cabradas. Look, we've probably mentioned this a number of times over the last couple of years when uh, referring to our project or discussing our project, and we, we believe it'll be a very, very low cost, uh, capital cost, low operating cost project. Uh, we don't intend to build a large uh, pellet plant or pellet feed plant, as, as is the case with the majority of projects uh, within Australia and some others around the world. We just want to produce a 62% concentrate, um, which requires what is effectively a large aggregate crushing plant with magnets uh, at, the, uh, at the back end. Um, this particular slide um, shows the tenements that we currently have, um, which are the ones in the lighter shade over here. The, and, and it shows the, uh, the eight El Dorado um, tenements, which, uh, as Alex um, mentioned in the introduction, that uh, we're in the middle of a heads of agreement to try and acquire. Um, I suppose what uh, what's important about this particular slide is that uh, we've started with a 398 hectare property three years ago when we listed. We picked up the 80 hectare property that we currently drilled out, and we're about to pick up a 750 hectare property. Um, so the project size has been growing and its potential to produce uh, some, some more uh, resources um, is growing at the same time. This particular uh, slide shows our project location, which again is fairly unique in terms of projects. Um, there are a number of projects around the world which have what, what look like on the surface uh, quite good resources or grades, but they tend to be stranded assets. So uh, essentially in the middle of nowhere, it costs a lot of money to actually get the projects uh, up and running. We're in a fortunate position that we uh, are 50 minutes by commercial jet from Santiago, you know, several flights a day, 400,000 people, very well serviced, engineering services, services the mining industry, two ports, one is a public port, one is a dedicated iron ore port um, run by uh, CAP, 
which is uh, Chile's largest iron ore producer and I suppose equivalent to a, uh, a BHP, but um, quite a pretty city. And then there's lower slide in the background where the, it looks like the mountains sort of disappear uh, around the coastline. Our project is, is just on the other side of that. So um, 25 minutes drive by highway. Um, highlights since listing. Um, we operated a uh, trial mining operation for a couple of years that gave us a lot of technical knowledge. Um, it had, had its ups and downs, but uh, we eventually shut that down. We'd been supplying concentrates to CAP, who have a pellet feed plant just down the road, and uh, that was a terrific relationship, um, formal offtake agreements, supply agreements, etc. Um, since then, we've, uh, we've had our first phase of drilling where we had our maiden jaw resource, purchased the uh, Arenas 11 tenement, 80 hectares, did our second drilling program, which is just finished, and uh, just in the process of uh, uh, about to declare a second chalk uh, mineral resource estimate. But essentially, uh, the, the message from this particular page is that Freehill has actually delivered on all of its planned tasks um, since the time it closed the uh, trial mining operation. I'm often asked, what's the difference between magnetite and hematite? Um, how are they different? Well, these two pictures probably uh, demonstrate that most clearly. Hematites, what's uh, generally mined in uh, Western Australia, Brazil, the red looking dirt. Magnetites uh, tend to be quite uh, dark black. Um, hematites can be dug out of the ground uh, as a direct shipping ore. The grades are generally quite high in the ground. Um, magnetites tend to be lower grade in the ground, but uh, they can be up graded quite significantly with magnets and tend to have lower impurities and uh, as I said can be upgraded quite significantly so this really just demonstrates the stark difference between the two two types of iron supply there are other types of iron ore but uh, those aren't particularly economic uh, global magnetite and hematite producers um, there's, there's quite a good uh, map here that uh, came out of the South Australian government which actually shows uh, those parts of the world that uh, dominate hematite, you can see uh, Western Australia there, you can see uh, Brazil, um, Russia, uh, but the darker portions, all of North America, China, Kazakhstan, uh, Ukraine, Sweden, have all been uh, predominantly magnetites and uh, the history of magnetites goes back uh, millennia. Um, so this just shows that the world is not just about hematite. Um, what are the drivers for magnetite? Well, in interestingly, as, as I said, uh, magnetites can be upgraded quite significantly, so they can be a preferred feedstock for blast furnaces, etc. Um, but the other uh, driver is, uh, and particularly for China, and it's no surprise that China um, takes most of Australia's iron ore exports, but, but particularly for China, there are environmental concerns nowadays. There are uh, cost pressures because a lot of their Smaller, older, less economic blast furnaces, steel mills, etc., inland a long way from the coast, and economics is coming to play. So the Chinese government is um, certainly pushing to, for its uh, steel producers to use higher grade and cleaner feedstocks for their industry, and, and that's why the outlook for magnetite um, into the future is um, quite promising. Uh, essentially, three different. Uh, I suppose markets for magnetite, and these are shown here, the sort of 58, 62, and greater than 65 percent FE. And Freehill would initially target the 62 percent market with a uh, with a, um, a concentrate. Uh, this is this this slide just um, indicates the sort of proportion of magnetites globally. Uh, it's not as much as uh, hematites, um, but I think a, a, a growing market will be a growing market in the future. There is a, a premium paid between the, uh, I suppose, what you could call the, the standard uh, iron ore grades and, and these premiums uh, or these, these grade uh, ranges apply to both magnetites and uh, hematites. And if you can produce a 65% grade concentrate, there is a significant premium and it's not a linear relationship. It tends to be a uh, non-linear relationship um, and you get a lot more... Uh, a lot more revenue if you can produce higher grades, um, hence the need for some projects to uh, uh, process their material all the way through to pellets or pellet feed. And that, that premium can be as much as uh, $30, $40, $50 sometimes. 
This particular slide just shows the different types of uh, uh, magnetite products that are traded, sold around the world, so pellets, centre feed, um, and it shows the uh, Free Hill uh, project when we were running the trial mining operation, just showing our, our um, simple, pro simple concentrate product. When we talk about magnetites, and uh, Chile is shown as a grey area on that previous global map, um, Chile, Chileans understand magnetite. Um, you, you don't hear the word hematite mentioned in that country. Um, that's why it's uh, so much easier to actually start up a, a magnetite project because uh, they are generally successful. Um, as I said, CAP, uh, uh, their equivalent of BHP, they run several uh, magnetite mining operations, pellet feed plants, pellet plants, um, coal rolled steel plants, um, and uh, that is who we supplied our concentrates to um, in 2017, 2018. The tonnages are, are relatively small by Australian standards, but are predicted to grow. So uh, there's a, a large project to our north, which will produce 12 million tonnes of magnetite as a, a byproduct from the copper operation. And um, CAP are looking at expanding their operation as well. Um, all of these products from magnetite mining go to the same destinations as Australian hematites, and China, Korea, Japan, uh, predominantly. Companies' development. Uh, strategy um, has, has been one to keep our project or a mining project uh, simple and that is to avoid uh, um, wet grinding because that involves obviously water finding water, um, you know, dams, thickness and so forth, um, technically a, a lot more involved. Our strategy is just a simple drill and blast, uh, much the same as our trial mining operation, crush, run it through magnets dry and sell it to 62% concentrate. Um, we've just recently uh, done some test work on the core from our drilling program and it just validates what uh, CAP, who, uh, who've been purchasing our concentrates for the past two years, have said, and that is they really like the Eurobus Buenos Magnetite, low on impurities, uh, alumina and silica. Um, as I said, we've just done some testing and um, if we were to grind that material super fine, we would end up with an extremely clean uh, magnetite product, but uh, there's a lot more capital cost in going that fine. So again, we will just keep it simple. This particular slide just outlines that drill, blast, crush, screen, separate by mag magnets and um, sell the material. And this particular uh, chart here just shows the um, iron ore pricing um, over the last few years and it's held up remarkably well. When I mentioned uh, selling our concentrates uh, to CAP, uh, this particular slide, product sales, actually shows a, a Google Earth image of the Romoral mining pit and CAP pellet plant, which is where we sold our materials to, and it's only 25 kilometres down the highway from our mine. When we get a, a mining operation up and running, um, there's a number of options in terms of sales, and uh, again, we, we're very fortunate that we do have these options. So. We can continue to supply to Romoral as a pellet feed material. Um, we could export um, pellet feed uh, or centre feed via public port at Coquimbo um, in the city to our south. Um, we could uh, export it via the CAP uh, dedicated iron ore port, Wyacan, or there's a new port which has been planned to be constructed uh, 18 kilometres from our mine gate. Um, at the moment, there's a public road that runs past our mine gate, goes to a place called Chungungu, um, and uh, it has had uh, ports in the past, and uh, there's a plan to build a new one, Cruz Grande, which uh, uh, must give uh, third-party access. So there's another opportunity that we have there. Next steps for Free Hills Magnetite Project. We've just finished our uh, drilling program. Um, everything's been assayed now, finally. Um, we've handed over all of that assaying data, drilling data and everything else um, to our uh, resource geologists who are now uh, preparing a uh, block model for a jaw mineral resource estimate update, which uh, should come out during May. As soon as we have some data from that, we'll be grabbing some um, drill core for metallurgical testing. And this is when we begin to find out what type of product a potential operation could produce. So that metallurgical testing is going to take a number of months. 
that'll allow us to uh, um, produce a flow sheet. The test work's going to be done at SGS, um, globally respected company in Santiago, and some of the um, modelling will be done in Brisbane at JK Tech Centre. Once we've finished that work, uh, we can then do some conceptual mine plans, and then we will then launch into a, a pre-feasibility study. Um, in parallel to that, as soon as we've um, got a conceptual mine plan, that enables us to kick off what's called a DIA, so it's essentially an uh, environmental study which allows us to apply for a mining licence um, for our project. So we can actually um, run that um, well before we finish our pre-feasibility study. This image uh, just shows a uh, conceptual um, um, one million tonne per annum uh, magnetite crushing plant. Nothing unusual about it uh, in the yellow box is where you would have a uh, magnet, magnet separation plant. Uh, the next slide shows a uh, magnet, magnetite um, project uh, about 270 kilometres north of us, um, just outside of a city called Kopiapo, which is a large mining, mining centre. And that, that project uh, got built um, fairly trouble free and it now exports um, Sinter um, via a local port, but uh, a very similar model to what uh, we would intend to, um, to follow. Um, as, as Alex also mentioned, um, we've just uh, signed a heads of agreement to acquire some property to our north and, uh, and um, we were actually <laughs> Very, very uh, fortunate, happy, fortunate that we've um, are in a in a position to acquire this property because it it's heading in the direction of uh, some major uh, magnetite projects, deposits. Uh, Dominga, a very, very large uh, copper gold magnetite project, uh, which is about 25, 30 kilometres up this same mountain range um, to the. Um, north east of us is La Higuera, which is a uh, copper mining province um, about seven kilometres away, which has been operating for well over 100 and something years and literally adjoining um, these El Dorado leases. Um, there's been drilling carried out by a couple of other companies um, over the last decade or so, which has um, shown up some quite good uh, magnetic anomalies and also some um, copper grades. So, um, in this area, there's a lot of artisanal gold and copper mining, um, some reasonably high grade surface grades of uh, magnetite. So uh, once we conclude the heads of agreement and we take formal possession, we've already arranged for a geophysics group to start doing geophysics over that area, essentially that, that same week. So um, we're going to have some uh, updates on that uh, very, very quickly after we take formal possession. Company's also gone out, as as mentioned in a very recent press release on the ASX, we've gone out and we've validated some of the um, assaying that we've been provided by uh, Minera El Dorado SEM. So it was just really just to confirm these areas where you've had the uh, um, artisanal mining. And that's, that's shown in the particular slide, um, some photographs there that show that and also some information from uh, previous drilling just outside of our uh, of the El Dorado tenement area, historical drilling, and, and the last slide uh, shows where we sit in terms of the uh, Atacama El Tofo faults and confluence of some faults. So um, we're we're in a particularly attractive area. Um, look, I I hope that uh, gives people a, a bit of a better insight into our project, and hopefully I've resolved some issues about uh, hematites and magnetites. And um, yeah, back over to you, Alex. Look, Peter, we've yeah. had a couple of questions that have come through. Uh, the first one, the first couple actually concern El Dorado. The, the first question is, is there a maiden drilling program planned for the El Dorado tenements? And in terms of financing for the tenement, how's that place given the capital raising from the sophisticated investor that was finalised earlier this year? There's a process that you have to go through in terms of, uh, you know, exploration. And, and um, I mean, our, our ultimate goal is to uh, create another um, resource or chalk resource, um, but it's pretty early days. I mean, we're reasonably confident there's, there's going to be something there. I mean, it's a quite mineralized area. So really until we start the geophysics and do some ground magnetics, we'll follow up with um, induced polarization, um, some fairly detailed ground surveys where the geologists go around and just uh, chip rocks, et cetera. Um, really until we get to that point, and that's not that far off, it's not that difficult, it's not that costly. 
But once we've done that little bit of geophysics, we'll have a much, much better idea of sort of what's uh, sitting under the ground. And, and as I said, it's not a costly exercise. Just another question on El Dorado, and this one's a little bit broader. Do you expect that the El Dorado project will have similar high-grade results, similar to what you've seen at Yerbas Buenos? And how long will it take to see any mining done? Yeah, look, again, very very difficult question to answer, Alex. I mean, I'd, I'd love to be able to give you an idea of grades and things, but really until it's um, drilled or until we do the geophysics, because from the geophysics, you can sometimes get a bit of an idea of, um, you know, the sort of overall average grade of a magnetite structure if you identify one. Um, the geophysics won't, won't give us an idea of, you know, obviously copper and gold grades. But really, until we've done the geophysics and start uh, putting down some reconnaissance holes, we won't have an idea of uh, of any sort of a grade. Did did I answer all of that? Sorry. I think so. Um, so, can you, in terms of um, Yerbas Buenas, can you just remind us again of the size of the exploration target, and can you see this growing materially when you release the updated jork? Um, the mineral, yeah, look, the, mineral resource estimate, I should say. Yeah, for Eurobus Buenos, I mean, we had our maiden resource, which which was a relatively small one. We we decided to start doing that on the uh, over the trial mining pit, and then we you know we obviously um, acquired the uh, Uranus Eleven lease, and that's the one we've drilled. Um, a little bit premature to, uh, I suppose, speculate on the size of the resource. Um, the block modelling um, has literally literally begun, and I mean that that takes. Uh, you know, several weeks, couple of weeks to several weeks. Um, but as soon as that's done, we'll have a uh, uh, average resource grade and average resource ton. So I, I, as I said, it's just uh, probably not not the best to speculate too much on that. Um, but that that's not far far away for shareholders. We'll obviously release that as soon as we uh, get the block model. You mentioned you you talk quite broadly about the magnetite industry and uh, and 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 the sector as a result and and the market as well. Do you see magnetite as the answer to green steel, given it being exothermic rather than endothermic? Yeah, look, the the exothermic aspect uh, that's quite a tricky one to try and describe. You know, where it where it sort of ends up being a little bit exothermic, sort of more in the um, reduction process. So, look, uh, uh, overall, magnetite's not this sort of magic bullet that uh, you know produces more energy than it than it consumes. So I'm just going to take a wild guess at this. It's not a panacea within the next 50 or 100 years. Um, but what it does is it allows uh, steel producers to reduce the amount of waste they produce. So you're sending a higher grade product and therefore you, you throw out less waste. Um, for example, in, in China, uh, less pollution, et cetera, um, improves the economics of steel mills and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, the exothermic portion of it is is... You know, it's a, it's one aspect in the whole thing. So, um, yeah, it should that that aspect shouldn't be sort of overblown or overstated. So, yeah. just just another one on El Dorado. So, I understand El Dorado is highly prospective for magnetite, copper, and gold. Uh, recent reconnaissance sampling returned grades of up to plus forty five percent iron and four point eight five percent copper, twenty two point eight grams per ton gold. But can you give us an idea to how many tons of iron ore are potentially in this new acquisition? Uh, yeah, look, I, I really don't want to come across as uh, deflecting on that, but again, r really until the geophysics, the, the first pass of geophysics is done, it's very difficult to uh, have any sort of a, you know, estimate. I mean, it really would just be a, an, an outright guess. But as I said, the geophysics literally would take, uh, you know, several days to actually do the gram magnetics then another couple of weeks just to process data and, and uh, once that's done we'll have a, a much clearer idea of what sort of structures are there and then then you can start to sort of have some some reasonable wild guesses at what uh, what might be there um, in, in that area but as I said it's just uh, it's really difficult to take a, a stab in the dark at that um, but yeah uh, that that will come out fairly soon that's that's not far away as I said once we once we take legal possession of uh, El Dorado, um, you know, we can kick off the geophysics, you know, literally within days and just, just start groundworks. Peter, can you confirm that El Dorado is being funded through the issue of new shares? Uh, the announcement you put out to market said you were paying for the project um, 75 million shares for it? No, absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, look, there's, there's, there's no cash involved. It's just uh, 
being funded through through the issue of shares into uh, into Freehill. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's it's actually a fairly good deal considering the size of the uh, the tenements um, and the prospectivity. Because as as we've mentioned a number of times, I mean, there's artisanal mining in the area, um, and that's a really good indicator. I mean, that's a that's a great starting point. But uh, you know, geophysics is the next step, sort of in confirming that's uh, you know its capability or its sort of prospectivity. In general, is the the Freehill Board and Directors happy with the liquidity this year? Um, you've since the, the capital rise from the sophisticated investor uh, earlier in the year, you had the Yerbas Buenos assays and the El Dorado acquisition announcements. How are things tracking that way? Um, yeah, look, it's probably probably an understatement to say that the stock's been trading a, at a very very good premium since the placement. I mean, I, I think at one point it effectively uh, trebled, um, plus having uh, the extra funding um, put in by the sophisticated investor. And I think that demonstrates people's um, I don't know, confidence, I suppose, in the in the project. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, share value will continue to improve as we hit uh, more milestones. As I'd said, I think it was in about the third or fourth slide that since we'd uh, wrapped up the trial mining, I mean, we've essentially uh, achieved everything that we said we were going to achieve. Um, you know, some things have come out of left field, which have been great, um, great for the project in terms of extra acquisitions. I see value continuing to improve, but in the near term, we'll just be focused on on the project and uh, sort of on the technical aspects of the project because uh, share value will automatically flow on from that. So, you know, as we demonstrate what's there. Peter, I understand you're cautious about the grade for the El Dorado project, uh, given you know you haven't quite got on the ground and, and done all the required uh, exploration that you talked about. Do the samples you have report, report, but do the samples you have reported mirror the initial samples from Yerbas Buenos? Uh, and I'm specifically talking about magnetite. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean we haven't we haven't done that much uh, sampling for uh, for iron. I mean we sort of uh, we we simply wanted to get in and just confirm or validate some of the um, assaying that's been provided to us. I mean we've been up into those areas. Obviously we've been up there with uh, you know people from um, Monero El Dorado. We've looked at these areas. I mean they exist. Um, but I, I look, I would be uh, I'd be confident that it'd be of a similar mineralogy. Um, to what we've uh, seen at um, Arenas 11, which is the, the YB6 structure and what we saw in the um, maiden drilling program. I mean, it's not going to vary that much. And as I said, CAP at their Romerol pellet feed plant probably will not begged, but, but we're always very insistent that uh, we supply as much as we possibly can to them because they felt that our feed, our magnetite concentrate was such a good concentrate in terms of low impurities. So uh, I think that'll continue just, just to our north end of the mountains. And just finally, Peter, unless there are any other questions, um, feel free to send them through, but I think we've probably got time for one more. Do you believe you can secure the finance to mine the whole project, or do you think it will need a takeover by an off-taker? If we actually chose to develop the project ourselves, which has sort of been the strategy from the very beginning, um, I don't think there'll be an issue because, as I said, Chile, Chileans understand magnetite. It's what the whole country's about. We've had an awful lot of good feedback from people that uh, have seen the project, visited, you know, know about the project and the and the development because it's been, you know, it's been some very very good development over the past two years. So, I think that could be funded, you know, possibly from within Chile. I don't see that as an issue. And the second thing is uh, a low capital cost project. So we're not talking about you know, 1.5 billion dollars. Um, you know, we, we're talking, you know, possibly you know, 30 million US dollars or 40 million US dollars, something like that, which the, the pre-feasibility pre study will confirm those numbers, but it's quite a low capital cost and what we call a low capital intensity. So, you know, dollars of capital per product produced, you know, whether that's a million or two million tonnes per annum. So, um, no, no, no issue. Um, and Perhaps in the meantime, if someone was uh, to uh, show up and offer to take over the project, look at that or consider that in the future. But at the moment, our objective is just simply to take this project through to a feasibility study and, and just demonstrate uh, you know, all of its virtues as soon as we possibly can. Just on that, Peter, we've just had one come through um, on that specific point. Have you had any... Have you had any dialogue recently with potential off-takers? And conceivably, could all your magnetite be sold locally? Uh, yes, as I said before, or tried to indicate before, Cap, uh, who've got the Romerol plant just down the road, 
Um, at the time we were running the pilot plant, they said, look, can you give us five to eight times as much? Um, they, they have certain issues with uh, some of their mining operations and supply and, and they would be willing to buy, as I said, five to eight times as much as we were producing. And also uh, export, not an issue. As I said, we've got multiple port choices and it's the quality of the uh, the magnetite, which I think um, you know would allow us to um, export if we wanted to. I don't think it's an issue at all with that. It will sell what quality of product we sell. So as I said, the strategy is a 62%. If the pre-feasibility study says we could, you know, go to a uh, 65% or something, you know, without wet processing, um, you know, we would attempt to do that because you get a premium for that. So, but all that will be revealed out of the pre-fees work. And just finally, Peter, I think this is uh, the last one. Um, that's probably all the time we have uh, today. So, just finally, what are some of the comparable magnetite projects located near near Yerbas Buenos? or near you guys in Chile in terms of resource size? Um, probably, I, I, I hope that people can see this screen, but if you look at the uh, the blue uh, outline on, on the screen here, which is uh, the El Dorado tenements that we've picked up, and as I move up there, you've got El Tofo, which is, as I said, South America's oldest iron ore mine, which is no longer running. And then you've got CAP who've been drilling this uh, next structure. You can see all the drill holes there. And then at the end of that mountain range is uh, the Dominga project, which is an absolutely enormous project uh, owned by Andes Iron, which has started off as magnetite, ended up being copper and gold. But uh, it's the one that, you know, would potentially have 12 million tonnes per annum of uh, magnetite byproduct. So there's a lot up there. And as you continue further north, another uh, two hours drive up the highway, you've got another probably 10 magnetite mines. So, um, yeah. Uh, there's a lot around us. It's it's a highly mineralized area, and we're definitely on the right uh, mountain range. Fantastic, Peter. Well, look, that's all the time we have today. Thank you all for joining me, um, and I'd also like to thank Peter Hinner for his presentation. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please download the presentation in the handouts panel. As I mentioned before, a recording of the webinar will be on the Freehill website later today, and on their social media networks as well. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions, feel please feel free to send them through to myself and I can address Peter uh, offline and we might be able to get some answers through to you. Um, thank you everyone and have a good afternoon. And uh, Peter, thanks for your time today as well. Thanks Alex and thanks to everyone that uh, registered and joined in. Thanks very much everyone.